today we're going to be checking out a home studio with my friend Andy Harper. He has a really cool and very efficient home studio setup to basically be able to be a one-man band and stream it. He actually put together a course for musicians to learn how to use streaming as like an extra gig. So the building that the studio's in, he built, it's detached, it's on his residence, it's on a beautiful piece of land, kind of like tucked away. And I'll let him get into it because it has a cool story and a really cool design, but I'll put links to Andy down in the description if you guys want to give him a follow and check out his stuff. If you haven't checked him out yet, I put out a drum sample one shot and loops pack called the Studio Kit. It's 35 bucks and it's got hundreds of drum samples and over 600 drum loops in it. It's very near and dear to my heart. I work super hard on it here in my studio with my WFL3 kit. I put a link to it at the top of the description. Also, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, go hit that subscribe button down below. You get notified whenever new home studio tours like this or any gear reviews, stuff like that gets uploaded, goes right into the feed, easy peasy. Drop a like on this video and the video is sponsored by Sweetwater. So for this video, I was thinking about like, what's a piece of gear that I use literally every single day. And uh, it's actually a compressor, which you can hear right now in my voice. It's the Universal Audio 1176 LN compressor. And this thing is amazing. I keep it on what I call my everything chain, which is essentially this mic or sometimes that mic going into the same pre into that compressor into Pro Tools or Logic. Lately, I've been using Logic, but this compressor sounds absolutely fantastic. I use it on vocals. I use it on acoustic guitar, bass, drums. I mean, if I could have 10 of them, I would. But if you want to check it out, I got a link to it down in the description, as well as all of the other gear that I use here in my studio. Thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Andy's setup and let's go check out his home studio. Oh yeah, beautiful. Tell me about this building. So uh, we built the building. It's really just a normal kind of metal building garage, but we had them frame it out in a way that you could do drywall, like a normal house and stuff on the inside. So we had that built and then we got uh, a father and son uh, Mennonite team of carpenters to come out and they did, no uh, they, they put that whole thing up and they helped us with the framing and stuff like that. Uh, and then we had a nice, awesome squad from, uh, I believe, South America um, that did all the drywall and all the really good finish work, um, which they just did an amazing job. And then I came in and did all the rest of it. Tell me about the layout here, floor plan. And so the floor plan, uh, this was designed by an acoustic engineer from Berlin, uh, Tobias. He designed this for us and uh, we basically have, uh, we're in the main room here, we have the one one big open room where uh, the drums and stuff will go like that over here. We can set some drums out. Uh, if you're coming in with a band and you've got you know a couple of people, get all your people laid out in here. We've got uh, an isolation booth really on each side of the studio. We have small isolations booth if you need to get away. And then in the center of everything is the control room. And uh, that's, you know, that's my office. That's where I spend most of my time. And uh, so that's decoupled from the rest of the building. It's a floating room uh, in the center of the studio there. So most of my stuff happens in there. That's where I do my live streams from and, you know, any production work, mixing stuff like that. Nice, simple layout, you know, some room to do stuff. As you can see, um, it's cleared out right now. I don't generally leave all the stuff set up. Uh, my wife also uses this room to do ballet. Uh, she cool. comes in and we roll the, the rug up and put the ballet floor down and she does some dancing. So it's kind of a multi-purpose room and uh, this worked out really well. It's really been just what we wanted it to be. What's the, what's the, um square footage on the building? That's a good question. I think it might be like 700 something square feet. It's uh, what'd you say? 24? 24 by 24. 24 so by 24. Nice. Let's do math. 576 is 24 by 24. Really? Is that the math? 24 times 24. That's I guess I right? guess that would make sense. Tiny. We are in it's 576 much. feet of space. Yeah, it seems very small, but like that's why- It feels bigger. That's why I consulted with a professional yeah. uh, acoustician that could actually do the right thing with the space because this is a detached building from our, our house that we live in. So it needed to have plumbing, you know, it needed to have a bathroom. Yeah. Um, it was, I was gonna put like a little kitchenette kind of back there initially, which is why like that room back behind you is plumbed to have a little kitchen thing in there. I wanted to get 
you know, and make sure that all of the walls were not parallel to each other and things like that. All of the little inset stuff, you know, everything, I wanted it to be the best that it could be for the acoustics, you know, of the space. That if I'm gonna put microphones up in here and record things, I wanted at least for the walls and things to be working in my favor. I figure I'm gonna have things yeah. working against me at some point, computers or who knows what, or dogs. Sure. Um, so we'll try and get that stuff done right. Uh, and he did, it's, it's great. Uh, I really like the design. It was a little bit difficult, I'm not gonna lie to you, getting it built. Yeah. Um, the construction, uh, like of these walls, this is pretty complicated framing uh, yeah. for this part. Now the other thing you, you don't see in a lot of studios what is the hammock so i i did i did have a hammock company a few years ago oh my and, gosh uh, I'm, I'm very much a hammock person oh god and this is uh put a laptop right here and this is my this is most of my office if i got to do laptop work this is where i'm doing my uh my laptop work so you know this is amazing you can come out if you're feeling really lazy you can spin around you can pull up some netflix up yes. There. You know, check that out. We got hammocks inside, we got hammocks outside. That is very efficient. Relaxing is very important. I see all these panels here. These look interesting and very custom. Yeah. Instead of when it came time to wire up uh, the rooms and get audio from one place to the next, uh, I, I was looking at, you know, some pretty large panels of XLR connectors, but I also wanted, you know, other connectors, USB. I wanted a lot of stuff. I wanted all the options. Sure, yeah. Um, and I also, I really, really hate soldering. I really mm -hmm. hate <laughs> the busy work of all the connections. So I chose to, and it really, it turned out to be rather cost effective. Um, I chose to do audio over IP and I use a Dante audio over IP network. Okay. And so um, it turned out, like I said, to be pretty cost effective too. Those, those panels, um, which I would have needed several, get pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, the flip side of that cost is you have a unit like, like this. So out in the main room here, we have this uh, Presonus RML32 AI. This is a stage box, which is basically for live music. But what's great about this is uh, it wasn't expensive. And um, for not much more, I could get a network card that I could just pop into it. So we've, that's what I did, and it plugs into the network. Um, it'll roll around and it can plug in anywhere around here. So anywhere you take this, you've got 32 Burr Brown Pre's ready to go. You've got the whole Presonus fat channel system for you know latency-free monitoring for uh, like you know drummers and stuff that don't want any latency at all. Yep. They just want a direct monitor, but they can still have it sound kind of good. So that's why I went with that. So you do have lots of network cabling yeah. uh, running all around this place. Every single wire is redundant. Um, so the whole thing nice. is twice. Everything is redundant. Um, inside the control room, I have a Focusrite Red 4 Pre, um, which is one of Focusrite's probably top uh, top line, top of their line interfaces. Um, it is network enabled from the factory, um, okay. which is why I chose that particular interface. Between those two, you put them both on the network, you get your little router, and uh, you've got a Dante network. Is it like a switcher? It's just a normal Cisco router. Oh, okay. Yeah, you didn't even oh. see it. It's just like sitting on the shelf down there. It's a tiny little, it's just a network router. Um, and it was so easy to set up, like there's just really nothing there was nothing to it. Um, and kind of like the, one of the things that I think is cool about it, and I'll show you in there, you've got like this grid. It just, when you pull open, you open up what's called the Dante controller. Um, and a Dante controller is this giant grid and it shows you like this way is all your transmitter and down the sides, all your receivers. And it's all your gear basically. This device, that device, and the computer. And it lets you just basically via a little grid grid patch bay yeah patch any outputs to any inputs to any outputs to multiples whatever you want i dig it you got some playback speakers out here yeah these are uh, actually just jbl whatever 300s mm -hmm. 305s or whatever they were but when, when they're out here and in these corners i mean it's almost ridiculous you walk in here and it's like what, what are you doing here yeah why do you have these little speakers in here well, you've been hearing them uh, it feels they fills thump. Up. Yeah. Um, yeah and there's a sub that's just kind of barely on um but it, it's it's uh i like the bass response from here yeah um i like when it comes to mixing i like to hear mixes in as many environments through as many things as i can 
before I'm like really comfortable that it's gonna sound good in like your car. That's one of the places, you know, that, that I check a mix is standing in the various, you know, places in this room that'll give you different responses. Mm -hmm. And you know, you do it like long enough with enough, with enough song, enough music, you can tell like what's, what's good, what's bad, what's hidden, what's not. This year I've picked up the Slate VSX system. So I do a lot less of yeah. the walking to different places and I just do it all right there. So back here, um, we wanted to have at least one space where you could kind of get away from everything if you needed to mm -hmm. and do a quiet vocal. You can of course go in the control room and do a quiet, a quiet vocal, but there's machine, there's computers in there running and stuff. This is your dedicated quiet room. So a little bit of a, you know, little gooseneck thing and uh, a line of sight back to me in the control room there. All right. I believe that's an Audio-Technica 2030. That's like my oldest mic around here. That was my standard. Um, I use a, I use a, a VMS, a virtual mic system. Oh yeah. Is my main mic. This is a Sennheiser. It's called uh, MKH 404. Nice. And this was like originally a broadcast mic, like uh -huh. from way back in the day. Um, and they would use them like, yeah, like TV guys, broadcast guys is what this was. Um, it has this cool little, Cool little this thing that it sits in. Whoa. Yeah. It's even got like that cool old school Sennheiser logo. Yeah. That's awesome. This thing actually sounds kind of cool. Um, when I got it, I got it from, uh, it was given to me as a gift from my friend Bill Evans, one of my old teachers. It comes with, uh, it's on the wall over there on the cord wall, this crazy big cable system that's got like this nine volt thing to juice it. When I looked this up, there weren't many people, like maybe literally like one, two, or three people that I found like on Gear Sluts that like mm -hmm. knew what it was and had used them or somebody like had it in use because nobody could figure out how to power it. Like they've got them, but they can't power them because yeah. it's this goofy phantom power thing that Sennheiser, Sennheiser did for like this mic uh, during like that year maybe. Um, yeah. But I have the power thing, so I oh, can actually cool. use this mic. And I mean, it's an interesting mic. It's got it's got an interesting sound. Uh, if I use it, I use it on like acoustic guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, up more like the neck mic. Yeah. So I'm a full-time uh, creative person, I guess you would say. Really anything that someone will pay me to do, I think mm -hmm. is what it comes down to. But um, no, over the years, I make uh, most of my income comes from design and like internet type stuff, web stuff. Um, and video work, doing a lot of video work, which comes with a lot of scoring. So over the years, I have scored a lot of stuff just for like client projects and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, of course, um, make my own music and, and write music uh, like it's a problem um, pretty much since the day I was born. So this facilitates that um, in a big way. Having it away from the house and being able to you know do it and not bother my wife and not interrupt the flow of things over there. It's been really, really nice. You know, you take a thing like vocals. Um, yep. I can't do vocals, you know, like when there's people around. Uh, yeah. I just prefer to get into that. I'm okay. I'm now going to be a singer. Yes. And I'm, I'm going to get into that character and do my vocal. I do better now that I've been streaming and playing a lot more live. You know, like uh, it's not such an issue, but there's still, uh, I do music at nighttime a lot and it gets really late and if it's midnight and your people in your house are asleep, you shouldn't be belting out vocals. Yeah. So uh, that's been really nice. Uh, I've, do, I've done, uh, let's see, commercially you've got like the Cake and Space guys. So I did uh, with Matt uh, some solos for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episodes first. We did some cool stuff. Heck yeah. uh, way back with those um, where like the turtles would be animated already and so like we'd have to write music and I'd have to write a solo that would basically fit with what the what the animation was already doing. Mm -hmm. So it was a little challenging uh, and super fun. There's been a couple of shows like where I do little guitar bits, little solos, uh, Dogs in Space, the theme song for that show. Oh cool. Has a little blah, 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 that's me. All the, like I said, all of my clients. The streaming uh, stuff, right? Now, yeah, lately this year, streaming, um, I do, I'm a music streamer on Twitch, so okay. I do music streaming on Twitch, um, and then I, of course, have 
uh, a course, uh, a, a streaming course. So you can go to alwaysandy.co promo and uh, check out the course. So are these some of the ones that you keep out for guests or are, are these for like more purpose uh, projects? I Instruments? Guess? From the left over that little mandolin, that belonged to my cousin Michael. Uh, and when I got into, I, I have a bit of a musical family, like especially on my dad's side. And uh, when Michael found out I was interested in, in mandolin and like blue, like blue grassy type stuff, I can't mm -hmm. talk good today. Um, he, he was like, hey, here's this mandolin. Yeah. Next to that, we get into a gift. Uh, this is one of my gift guitars from my wife. That's a Martin Custom Shop that she got me a few years back. Um, nice. I do love and adore this guitar. Oh, I love it. It's, uh, it's got an LR, uh, LR bags pickup in it. And so like, oh my gosh, this is like the most amazing pickups ever. Next to that, these are like all gift instruments. Holy cow, That's what, this is the wall of gifts. Nice. Uh, next to that, that Fender P bass there is, that was a gift from my friend Matt Sharetta who got me, uh, he got me that bass because I had got him a job like a long time ago. Huh. Um, and he just showed up one day, he's like, here dude, got you a bass, you know? <laughs> Thanks so much, you don't, you don't know it, but you changed my life, so here's a bass. And I'm like, oh wow, awesome dude, that's super fantastic. Next, that's a lore. Have you ever heard of the lore, the no. brand? Uh, the lore comes from, uh, and I don't think the guy has anything to do with the company, but there was a man with a name, I think his last name was Lore, maybe, mm -hmm. that worked in like either the old Gibson or Fender factories or shops or something. Like I think it's Gibson history, but he's a historical figure in the making of these types of instruments. Yeah. Um, that's where this brand got, took the name from, but that's the name of the brand is The Lore. Yeah. Um, I'd never heard of it in the local shop, Forest York Guitar Guitars in, in Murfreesboro. He's got some instruments from The Lore and uh, my wife got me that mandolin as a gift one year. Super cool looking. It's, it's a, really it's a cool great body. mandolin, dude. It plays really well. This is my Strat. It's beautiful. Uh, I love, love, love this Strat. This was the guitar I wanted for like my whole entire life. Strat, maple neck. I never gave much thought to the color, but when they, I showed up to the store and they had it in white, I thought that's fine. Uh, but the, the maple neck was, yeah. the, had to have, had to have that. But American Strat standard, nothing special. That's got DiMarzio Paul injector, or uh, Paul Gilbert injectors in it is what are just a little bit hot. Yeah. They still have a Strat sound, but they're, uh, Noise canceled and a oh, cool. little bit hotter than the average Strat pickup. Then we've got the Fender banjo. Uh, I do love to play the banjo. My banjo chops are terrible, I'm sure, uh, now, but I had a little banjo phase. Um, some of my cousins play banjo. And that was a gift from my wife. My wife, she likes to give me instruments. These come out for company. Yes, these were in their cases in yeah. the house. Oh, okay, gotcha. The special uh, ones. In, in the perfect humidity controlled yeah. environment um, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, these guys do, I let them stay out. Um, they'll get used, you know, anything that gets used stays out. So we have a bathroom, of course, like I said, we still, we don't wanna have to go all the way to the house to use the bathroom. This isolation room over here ended up being more of just a closet. Since we live out here in the country, I have to have things like chainsaws, you know, and I have to have tools. Mm -hmm. This is a Kramer Pacer, it used to be red. Doesn't really play much anymore. It needs to probably be rewired. Um, and then that, that's just yeah. an old Craigslist. Craigslist Epiphone. This is another gift from my wife. Schecter C1 Ooh, Elite. Ooh, yeah. It's got one of those, uh, pull this out and it does single coil split. Yeah. So um, I went to the store that day to buy. She said, hey, it's your birthday. We're gonna get you a guitar. And we went to Guitar Center and I was like, you know, okay, I don't know if I, I want a Strat or a Les Paul. That's what I wanted. Yeah. So I was, I wanted either a Strat or a Les Paul. This one was like 700 something dollars. Yeah. Versus the thousand, you know, sure. whatever that the others would be. And this one, it sounds like a Les Paul and a Strat. Nice. Like, kind of almost a little yeah. bit, you know what I mean? Like it was enough and it's just really nice. You know, it's like. Dude, those guitars the, play really sculpted well. Sculpted through and uh, honest to God, um, still to this day, I mean, it's a little gaudy, it's orange. I wouldn't take it out and play in Nashville probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, it sounds great. Yeah. Uh, everything you ever do with this guitar, it sounds fantastic. Yeah. It's one of my favorite guitars. And yeah, you know, sculpted top and all that stuff. But. So let's go on into the control room here. We've got to go through two doors because like we said, we've got a floating, fully decoupled control room in here. Dude, that's great. 
And this is set up really for me. This is my world. I get to live right here. And you know, people ask me sometimes, hey, what do you, you play music, right? What do, what do you play? And uh -huh. what I play is this, you know, I play all of this. Yeah. Um, whether it's an instrument, like, you know, at a given time, we've got guitars, of course. We've got this little push controller over here and pianos and things. Um, and all of the instruments that I play kind of come from right here. Drums happen here, you know, piano of course happens there too, but you've got various controllers all around my feet and such because when I'm streaming and when I play like my songs, when I play cover songs, when I'm playing the songs, as it were, uh, I usually have an instrument in my, in my hand. That's why you got these stuff on the floor so that I can use these various things to move around in my software um, and start off different sections of songs because well, like when I play songs back as covers, um, I play it back like a whole band. I go into the software, I use Ableton, okay. and I go in here and I record all the guitar parts, I record the bass part, I record the drum part. Mm -hmm. And really a lot of times this happens on stream, twitch.com slash alwaysandy underscore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're self-promoing today, right? <laughs> I'm totally cut that out, I don't ever self promo. <laughs> It's a good way to make yourself feel awkward. Say your own URL out loud, right? On Twitch, one of the things that people like to do is just like watch you make things. They like to see like the behind the scenes. So yeah. I don't have any trouble at all doing that. That's what's fun for me. I like to turn a stream on and do just that. Um, so we do a lot, a lot of that on stream, just the production of stuff. And people will come in and ask you like, what, what are you doing? What's, what's that? What's that EQ? What's, what, you know, what's your vocal chain? You know, we'll get all kinds of different stuff that people will want to know. And I'll tell them all about it. We do have some guitars. This is the newest one around here. Whoa. The Nashville people probably don't like this as much because this is a headless guitar. Yeah. Um, which freaks people out. I know, there's no headless lot. This is a Kiesel Osiris. Um, and as you can see, it's utterly beautiful. This is a one piece uh, antique ash body. It's just oh, one nice. piece. You see there's no seam. They did a, it's such a good job too of like choosing the wood and stuff that they, mm -hmm. oh, it's just so awesome. In any event, this is, my, this is my main streaming guitar. Mm -hmm. um, I love this. Of course it sounds great. Um, that's, that's fine. But it's, it's small. You know? yeah, yeah. If yeah. I sit here, this is, this is where I sit when I'm you know, jamming in a stream. You can see this controller is right here. This is not a problem anymore. Yep. This headstock will not hit. Every other guitar, that is a problem. Yep. Because if I just randomly, that's what happens there. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So we're just in the middle of a chorus or something of a song, which is no good. So I really, this guitar has been amazing. I mean, it has so many things that are amazing about it. I mean, gosh, look at the bevels and all this thing. It's ridiculous. But its size is uh, was an unexpected Feature. What's this thing called, a push? So that is an Ableton push. This is the push controller. Okay. And so it does uh, a couple of things. And really, it does one thing that you cannot do um, in anything else. And, and that's in loop recording. To start something, uh, start a loop recording, and then have that loop stop all by itself, and then start repeating all by itself. Um, you can't really do that in Ableton just like you gotta have a push and do it like kind of with a button. This is a uh, very, very full featured controller. So like you're looking at this grid right here, mm -hmm. all these blinking lights, these correspond to, all these things up here are, are called cells and each one of those cells has audio in it, right? So yeah. the ones that are lit up green are about to play. If I double click that, you can see that's just an audio clip, right? Mm -hmm. This next to it, this is just an audio clip. So if you kind of imagine it, on a timeline, those would all be together and they'd be that one little bit in the timeline, right? Yep. But instead over here, they're all out like this. So what we end up having is parts of a song that we can play back. Here's Sedated's chorus. Yeah. You know, so we can go down through the project and step into each section of the song that we want to get into. So the controllers just help you know, keep yeah. everything running, you know, because you're doing like a, if I'm streaming, that's a live show. I'm doing a live performance. There's people watching. Um, you don't need things to, to be difficult. Like as with any live performance, like 
the number one thing, at least in my opinion, the number one thing that you can do as a live performer is take things off of your plate. You know, the less things that you have to think about, the less things you have to do, the better, because it's about your performance, remember, you're trying to give a good performance. Yep. I can't give a good performance if I know something's wrong and I'm unable to fix it. I have lots of ways to do that, like this push thing gives me tactile controls over all the volumes for all these channels. I mean, yeah. do you think I could grab a mouse and adjust the volume of that while I'm playing the song? Yeah. No, I couldn't do that, but I can very easily reach over here real quick and just adjust that volume real quick. This controller over here, this is an Akai LPD-8, and this is like kind of integral to the whole stream thing. This controller, uh, I use like this, these pads to turn on the microphone, to turn on the guitar. Oh, um, cool. Turn off more, more uh, poignantly. Um, things like reverb uh, on and off. Like I can dial in my reverb right here because a song finishes up. I, I need reverb to sing the song. Yeah. But it, sound, it sounds pretty silly if I'm still in a cavern sure, yeah, while yeah. I'm talking to people in between songs, right? So you want to be able to quickly turn your reverb down. Various other things. That Ooh, that's have awesome. Set up. That's you cool. You gotta though. have the controllers, you know. What, what's that <laughs> unit called? This uh, Akai LPD8. LPD8. Okay. Cool. Oh. Ableton is one of the. I mean, I'm sure they're all really good now. Um, I used Digital Performer kind of as my mm -hmm. general DAW for scoring and tracking prior to getting into streaming. Once I got into streaming, kind of became all Ableton, and um, I've been kind of happy with. Like my, I've done just a bunch of songs. Let's see, eight songs this year, where I did the whole thing in Ableton. Yeah. And what I found interesting was that I would do the writing in this in session view, which is what they call this, versus a timeline. You know. Yeah. I've spent my whole right, my whole life writing music to a timeline. Yep. And now I'm writing music in grid style. Yeah. Right. And so like you might appreciate this like as a video editor guy, right? So, oh yeah. I'm now doing my video scoring stuff like here in this style because like that way um, each one of these sections, you know, like uh, is going to be the same length. So like say like I was doing one the other week where the video part was already cut um, and, and I edited the cut to the tempo of, of that project, right? And so then we went back and we started doing there was a 15 second, a 30 second, a 45 second, a 60, you know, there's all these different lengths. but. They're all the same tempo. They're just longer or shorter. Yeah. So typically that would involve going back to the timeline, going in here, getting this part, make, copying this, pasting it over here, hoping all your envelopes and all the stuff yeah. pace with it and doing all the things. Um, and then you hope, is it, you know, print it, off you go. Whereas this, like you don't have to do that at all. You just decide, oh, I need that. Let's play one more section or let's play this section. Or, oh, that one's twice as long. I'll just cut that section in half put it here, we'll play that section. And then you just go like this, time for the thing. Press record and you go, start, start. Okay, done. Amazing. I mean like, in, uh, it makes doing the audio side of a video production so much faster. It's been like uh, such a time saver, I love that. This is a Raven, speaking of time savers, a Slate Raven. I like tactile control, you know? Like uh -huh. I've, I've been through probably every single MIDI controller thing uh -huh. that, that's come along, like the Mackie yeah. control type things from back in the day, because yeah. I came from a world where we, where I learned to make music like on a console. Yeah. And so yeah. I really think that like when you're mixing music, it's a, this is a even mixing like is a physical activity. Yeah. Like you should use your whole body. You should you should sit up and be engaged. Like this is what happens when yeah. you're stuck with your mouse and you're clicking <laughs> and you're clicking and you're clicking. This isn't making music. This is making music. This is using both my hands to do things. I want to tweak this little EQ there, you know, or I want to go over here and check out what are we doing with that MOTT plugin on this bass, you know? Oh, it's a little too long there. Cool. Get rid of it. You know, like music is a physical thing. And that's why the Raven, I think, is one of my most favorite things that I have. Wow. And I've ever had around here just because I can do a whole session without touching this stupid mouse. Yeah. Like, which is, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I hate the that. mouse. I love that. So these are Event ASP8s. I've had them for years, years and years. It's one of the first, like, big, nice purchases that I made around here. Um, they, they, they sound great. I love them. Um, I'm, of course, used to them. I've been using them for years. Sure. Yeah, they're good monitors. Um, like I said, the most of it around here right now, uh, they're more like a check. Most most of the coolness for me is, is 
the VSX. If they get it done, and I'm gonna leave them out so that we don't forget to let you put those on before you go, okay. because they will blow your mind. So here's like all the rooms. I was gonna say like, you've got several studios to choose from, um, and you've got vehicles that you can hop in. And so for me, what's useful in this, you know, it's just kind of a tool like yeah. anything else. Um, it saves me time from having to go check stuff. So what's useful to me has been uh, these car models. Those have been useful. Um, I like the NS10s uh, here uh, in this one. Also, uh, this one's got good NS10s too. The NS10 mixes in here because, I mean, it's just like mixing on NS10s. Like yeah. if you can get them to sound good, like it, it's probably going to be good. I would say in general, all of my projects that come through here, um, and I think I've got it dialed in pretty well. I like top-down kind of stuff, generally. Um, so from the top-down, um, we're using, I'm into the Neve console model, so I use the Slate package um, with the Slate stuff. Pretty much all of my stuff is the Slate plugins. Nice. Um, and it just came to be because first I had the Raven. Yeah. The Raven comes with software, and the software for the Raven was so good. And I'm, I'm kind of a software person. I, I do that a little bit, it's more at that time too. But it was so good, I was like, hmm, I think I'll give these plugins a try. Right now I'm into their Neve model for the console. Um, this uh, 550 clone thing, generally it sits there and if it gets anything, it'll be just plus two at 10. Uh, up on the high, it's off. It's usually off. Sometimes it's just like, it's a nice little like sheen on the top. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of been replaced mostly right now with uh, this guy, oh, everyone's favorite. Overstayer came to my attention um, through Matt Mahaffey. He had one of the first like hardware units, you know, that, that dude put out. And uh, oh man, I found out they had a plugin like earlier this year or something. I was like, where have I been? I think he came out, he, he, they put it out like during COVID maybe. But it's so good. It's so good. It's just one of those things that it has to go on every mix. It's going on every mix. It's going on group channels. It's going on solo vocal channels. It's like, it's going on a lot of stuff. It's just one of those plugins that makes everything sound better. Um, now for guitars and stuff, again, you're going to see the same plugins as the other stuff, Slate. So this is uh, THU by Overloud, which comes in the Slate package. So it's like, yeah, got to try it out. It's free. Um, and so I hop in, I try it, I'm like, it's pretty good. Um, and I end up using it for a while. Um, Neural DSP has just been killing it in amp sims, like in recent years. And they sound so good. Uh, one of my favorite amps that I've ever used uh, is this Anything by Soldano. Um, I used to have physical Soldano, Soldano amps. I just love them, they're so good. So Neural released a, uh, you know, uh, an SLA 100 model, which was so, so good. So I had it and I was like, I really want to buy this plugin. But before I do that, I'm gonna shoot it out kind of against my stuff. And I even made a little video and I ended up like not buying it. I really wanted to buy it, but like yeah. I couldn't really justify the hundred whatever it was because you know, the THU stuff is just really good. So I'm not talking about the models that Overloud builds into their stuff like this, you know, like it's an actual amp, yeah. you know, or these, these amps that are, these models that are designed to be, you know, that's obviously a Mesa, like sure. that's an amp model. What I'm using in the THU stuff, whoops, primarily, is this thing called the Rig Player. So these Rig Players lets these companies do rig captures. Well, they'll just get some famous great amp and do this capture, whatever that is. There you go. So you have the model of the capture. And these amps sound so good. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a total amp junkie. I love amps. I have been... Since I was born, I'm all about the amp. I want preamps, power amps. I want all of it. I would, I would never have thought that I would have just like switched over entirely to just doing everything in the box um, and not even using amps. Like it's, it's shocking to me, but I rarely, rarely get a, like an actual guitar amp out. Yeah. I have that amp back there. That's that's to go play. That's for yeah. when people call me to go like play out somewhere. And no matter how great a tone it seems like. Nowadays that I get from like real amps, I can, I can get as good a tone like from one of the models and it's just like, wow. For the most part, that's what's going on with the guitar amps and stuff. Drums, I'm using Get Good Drums. These drums are the greatest drums <laughs> uh, for me lately. So I hear 
somebody I know has got like a sample pack, I might have to be replacing some samples with some cool stuff. I generally take the path of least resistance when it comes to drums and, and always have. You know, like I write music that's not always just like, you know, four bars of this and four bars of that. There's weird stuff. I don't know. You know, I write, I write music like that. So the loop libraries aren't always just what's for me. So what's for me is to have, you know, to be able to play the drums. That's loud, isn't it? But to be able to play. That's how, that's how I play drums, you know? And so the fastest, easiest way for me to do any kind of drums is to have a good plug-in and just go and just play them. Um, I much prefer keys to pads, any kind of a pad situation. Yeah. Pads don't ever on anything that I've ever tried, and I've tried them all. Um, they don't ever seem to be as responsive enough. You know, I can't do... I can't do intricate hi-hat stuff, like, on pads. They're not, yeah. they're not there. It's, you want it to be, but it's not. Uh, I do love vocals. You know, like, the, even, even this little thing. Put me in a wheelchair and get me on a plane oh, yeah, 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 Before I go insane I can't control my this fingers, is... I can't control my brain Oh, no, oh, 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 oh. This is a tiny little punk song, you know, like there shouldn't be all those vocals in this song, but like that's how I do pretty much like everything I do. I like to just stack up the vocals. Um, and that's really, that's one of those things that I've learned from other people. People like Mahaffey, he does great vocals. Like his vocal stuff is boo. Um, and when he told me once, he's like, oh yeah, like 10, 12, I'm like, really? Why would you do that? And it's, it's, it's you know, it's tasteful. So one thing I will say, um, I always like to, whether it's guitars, it's really just guitars and vocals, but I will use, as you can see, uh, different guitars. Behind you is the Les Paul, out there is the Strat. Those two come into rotations, the Kiesel, seven string, eight string, and then we have a bass. All those guitars are different, and I use different guitars because each guitar has a different sound. Everything's, all the sounds are different. So not only that, but if we go up here, we'll see, I won't go into that different amps, you know, so we've got one, two, three, four, five different guitar channels for this song. We've got center, we've got hard pan left and right, and we've got another set of mildly panned. And those five together are making up the guitar tone that's in this particular production, right? Yeah. Every one of those amps is different. I really think that that contributes to like a big, huge, awesome sound. Yeah. Is when you're not just like stacking up the same exact sounds. They, that doesn't work good. When you get into the vocals, I'll use different mic models. So that's one of the reasons that I have the slate mic here. I can just pull this up and choose, you know, from different ones. They kind of name them all so that you know what they are, what they are kind of. But we've got a 269 here. That's kind of my main go-to. There's a, a nice variety of mics yeah. like in this locker. I also got the Blackbird locker. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And those mics are really, really good too. I, I definitely make use of, of doing, of using the different mics, you know, like on harmony vocals, you know, like maybe use uh, like a different mic that's got more of a mid-rangey thing, you know, like a 67 or run it through the Neve, you know, the Neve EQ thing, just to get more of a different mid boost um, and make that vocal be different. Because yeah, I think if you, you, the more you mix up the different sounds, it's like, it seems like they just come together like so much better. The, you know, my thing with tuning, I mean, you can you can only tune a vocal so much. Uh, I, I feel like the tuning plugins have got us to a point where we can be lazy, like with our vocal takes to an extent. Like, or that's not the right word. Maybe we can be in a little. We don't have to take. We, yeah, we don't have to take like so long. But like I used to do like 20, 30, 40 cakes of one vocal line um, to get it like because I just wanted to be strong right there. Whereas I won't do that now. I'll just, you know, I'll, you can turn on the tuning plugin like just a little so it doesn't do robot things. And yeah. then you don't have to spend half your life getting the perfect take. Anybody that looks at my Instagram will tell you I constantly, and my YouTube too, I constantly post things that are imperfect on purpose. Yeah. Um, because there's so much perfection in the world. Like, yeah, I mean, I'll do perfect stuff and send it to people who are paying for stuff. And for the rest of us, uh-oh. Look at this mistake I just made, like that was funny. Um, you can look me up on Instagram, alwaysandy underscore. Uh, same thing on Twitch, twitch.tv slash alwaysandy underscore. 
I have a website, alwaysandy.co, where you can find all my stuff too, as well as my streamer course, which is called Pro Streaming for Musicians. Uh, and that will help anybody that's looking to you know, get a fast start into the world of streaming. That's your go-to right there.